one, the mute one. Yeah. Right. I will start ready to call meeting November 1st, 2021 at 6 p.m. Roll call. Ivan Sandoval. Present. Maribel Diaz. <coughs> Absent. Esmeralda Solis. Present. Lloyd Loya. Present. Cesar Rodriguez. Present. Ricardo Perez. Here. We do have a quorum, a Pledge of Allegiance. Item number two, minutes, approval of minutes for the August 6, 2021 August Aquasad board meeting. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Sandoval. I have a second by Cesar. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Item number three, discussion possible action on orders amending the district capital improvement plan, impact fee, water rights fee, and other fees set forth Article 9 of the rules of Agua Special Utility District. Mr. President, uh, Jaron Hudgens uh, from my office is on the telephone call. He's been the person responsible for the legal side of the impact fee committee and process. He's got a, a, a short description of where we're sitting, what's been done, and, and what's before the board today. Jaron, can you hear us? Yes, I can. All right, the floor is yours. All right, good evening. and also the uh, district's impact fee. So just as far as a background for that, um, the Texas statutes uh, periodically require uh, the district to review its land use assumptions, capital improvements plan, determine whether the impact fee uh, needs to be amended to address uh, those needs that the district has as uh, population continues to grow and that development requires um, additional uh, capacity and capability on the district's infrastructure. Just as a form of background, as the board will undoubtedly uh, recall, the, um, the district had its engineers in to conduct a, um, a review of the capital improvements and come up with a capital improvements plan that listed out various um, projects uh, to the capital infrastructure of the district to address ongoing growth and capacity requirements. Of course, the state has various capacity requirements that the district is able to provide continuous and adequate uh, service to all of its customers, um, not only now, but also into the future, the next 5, 10, 15 years. Uh, also, the board then appoints um, as required by statute, uh, impact the advisory committee. Uh, John Womack is the chair of that committee. I believe he is uh, here present to answer any questions that the board will have uh, regarding their recommendations. So the uh, impact fee advisory committee will uh, review the land use assumptions, the capital improvements plan of the district, and uh, make recommendations regarding uh, the impact fee and the capital improvements plan um, to, to ensure that the district's uh, capital improvements plan and impact fee have the input from you know, developers and, and those familiar with the type of growth that will um, require or touch upon that capacity of the district. Uh, so anytime that there is an amendment to the capital improvements plan and the impact fee, uh, there is a uh, publication requirement and hearing requirement. Of course, the district uh, published the um, capital improvement plan amendments and, and impact fee or notice of the hearing for that. The district had a hearing, uh, a public hearing, and, uh, and has 
taken you know all of the input that it has received from the advisory committee and the public and, uh, and incorporated that into you know this order uh, approval of the order will uh, approve both the amended uh, capital improvements plan and the amended proposed uh, impact fee to address uh, the additional costs required to uh, pay for the various capital improvements. Thanks, Jaron. Uh, so w where we're sitting today is the we have complied with all the timeline and notice requirements for this board to consider changing the impact uh, fee that's charged for new development uh, in the area. Mr. Womack is here today. He served on that committee. And essentially what I understand is being proposed is that there has been an imbalance between the money that the district has accumulated for water rights and what it has accumulated for uh, impact fees. The impact fee was reduced to, I believe, $150 uh, three or four years ago in that neighborhood. And what's resulted is we now have a significant and, and meaningful um, fund for water rights but we cannot use those funds for water rights for uh, new infrastructure. And because the capital improvements plan has been uh, updated and approved, there are some projects that are, are being contemplated and uh, recommended by that particular plan. And so the ad adjustment that is being proposed is to, uh, is, is a net, almost a net zero change. And each one of you has in front of you a, a little breakdown of what the fee structure has been and then what the proposed change would be. So as you can see, what is being proposed is a reduction in the water rights fee from $1,900 to 1175 The impact fee goes from 150 to 800 There's some uh, minor adjustments to the meter fee due to increased cost of the meter. But as you can see, we're talking about a, a net increase of five dollars what happened uh, what was the reason it went down so much who can answer that question uh the impact fee yeah there was th the water this, rights oh sorry oh the, the water rights fee yeah because it went from 1900 to 1175 dollars okay that's the proposal so as of right now it's 1900 dollars. the proposal and mr snowden is, is our water consultant he's on the line also he's getting cheaper water or what? uh no we have a we have a i wouldn't call it we never have a surplus of funds available for water <laughs> But uh, we've got an adequate uh, yes. reserve so of what's water rights. Happen when that right runs out? What's that again? What's going to happen when that runs out? Well, we're, we will continue to collect water rights uh, fees mm -hmm. as as we move forward. So we're not eliminating the water rights fees. What is the cost of a water right right now? Miss, uh, the water right fees, uh, municipal water right uh -huh. fees, it's uh, three, uh, approximately three thousand dollars per acre foot. Uh -huh. Yes. Mr. Perez. Right now. Yes. You can look at the chart here. What's proposed, and it will give you. All the years and how much it'll be increasing? It's increasing. I was here probably 2009, and the original was eight thousand dollars. When I mean, you probably you guys were not here, but we had a hard time getting to to that number. And now, for you guys, done. I mean, somebody's done a great job because it's four thousand to twenty six hundred, mm -hmm. and things are just getting worse, more expensive. Somebody did. Uh, I mean, some good because it came down. So I, I uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Snowden, but I, I think it was your rec you did the analysis and made the recommendations on the adjustments of these fees. Um, but of course, uh, the floor is yours, sir. If you would like to uh, provide any information to the board, uh, any anything else that you think is important. Uh, thank you. But actually, uh, internal staff led this effort. I, I provided support, but I think Pam led this development of the new numbers. That surplus, how much money is it? Do you have a number? On what? the water rights? Yes. On water rights, we have uh, approximately, we have 2.5 million on water rights mm -hmm. uh, reserved just for water rights uh, purchases. Mm -hmm. For how many Allocated. lots would that be? Uh, on lots? Uh, for subdivision, it can be from, now many cities are that are in the area are getting sewer, so the, the lots are becoming a lot smaller mm -hmm. than what the mm -hmm. half acre. So that's uh, how many lots do you have? Uh, more I don't, an I don't average have a, lot? I don't have a number as, as far as uh, per uh, lot, uh, but uh, I think we're, we're getting closer to, I believe, uh, I mean, a thousand acre foot is uh, $3 million. 
So we're just short of that, probably 800, around 800, 800 acre foot, left. 800 acre foot of of, of, uh, of water, mm -hmm. uh, rice. So that's about 800 acres mm -hmm. for this for this amount. And how many lots? I, I don't have it in a, in a lot format, but on an acre foot format. I think Mr. Slogan can give you an answer as to how mm -hmm. how many years that will give us based on the the, the projected growth. Yes, yes, sir. Um, is the question how many years will our, our current inventory carry us forward? Yes. Okay, I'm showing that right now the, the, with the water rights that we own, the 2% annual growth will go through 2043. But my, my question is how many lots can we do have acres? So he's asking how many lots uh, uh, in a half acre? Yes. Mr. Is, yes. That's what he's asking, Mr. Colvin. Do you have that math? Um, I, if you'll give me just a minute, I'll be glad to calculate how many new connection equivalents that it equals, which would be the same as lots. Yes, sir. We can probably get it next meeting. That's fine. Okay. It's about 400 gallons per household. Mr. Warmack, would you like to say something? behalf of the committee. lines, plants, towers, uh, uh, ground, so, and, and, and widening of lines, and, and you're right, as we call the miles, there's some needs up there, we're going to be out there servicing those at, at, at the water pool there. So, I, I was very happy to see this plan, I was very happy to see it stay at the cost it did, uh, we had a lot of debate on that during the, during the process, but the bottom line is this, we're, we're making it affordable, we're able to have three wells. Yes, sir. Three wells yes, sir. that we're not even tapped into. No. So that's the source of water, and that's a good question mm -hmm. you may want to ask is what does that do, but I think that came up. So that's an additional source of water that, that's not related to the river, if you will, that this corporation has access to for additional growth. So I think things are in good shape, and I, I highly recommend that path. Okay. Any questions? If not, I'll thank you. Okay. Appreciate it, sir. Sure. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. So there are two orders that are in the board packet. Uh, one, and, and because the process is different for amending the impact fee uh, from the water rights fee and the other fees, there's, there's two separate orders. So uh, one of the orders in the packet that's proposed is just for the impact fee to reduce the, in, excuse me, to increase the impact fee to the uh, $800 level. And then the other order amends our rules and the schedule to provide for all those fees. And so that's why there's two uh, separate orders being proposed. But it, the, the cumulative effect of the board, if the board was to approve both orders, would be um, what you see on the right-hand column yes. um, before you. Yeah. <coughs> okay. I move to amend the district's capital improvement plan, impact fee, water right fee, and other fees set forth in Article 9 of the rules of Agua Club Special Utility District. Second. I have a motion by Loya. I have a second by Cesar. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And the next item, uh, Mr. Ward President, I believe Mr. Slogan has asked for us. Uh, we have another meeting to 
two or ten. So this item is number twelve. Uh, at this time, I'd like to make a motion to move item twelve as our next item on our agenda. I have a motion by lawyer. Second. Second, second by uh, Solis. All in favor? Second by Pesay. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. A discussion possible action to enable board president or general manager to execute resolution for the purchase of. 1,500 acre feet of Class B priority use of a municipal equivalent of 500 acre feet from ML Roads LLC and to direct Alwasad and staff and consultants to work with ML Roads staff and TCEQ on all administrative matters. Mr. Snowden. <coughs> it's a good evening, Mr. Chair and members of the board. Thank you all for accommodating my schedule. I've, I've prepared to similar to the other transactions and I believe that Jerry Hutton made some edits to that over the last couple of days, so it might not look exactly the same as the previous document. But uh, in a nutshell, this is the this is a culmination of your instruction to find additional water rights. Uh, uh, we working with a seller that we worked with previously, uh, ML Roads. Um, they've actually dropped their price the last time we we transacted with them. They were three thousand one hundred and fifty dollars per municipal acre foot. They're now at three thousand. And uh, the next step, if you choose to go forward, this transaction is that uh, they will provide us a water sales agreement, which will be the same document that we reviewed and executed in the past with different numbers in it. Uh, for, uh, the resolution would require that uh, the general manager review that along with council and then execute. And then we'll begin the process. We'll put in a 5% escrow fund to that. It will be about a six month process where ML Rose can be entirely responsible for working with the TCEQ to change the certificate of adjudication and put that in the name of Iowa Sud and uh, match your diversion points to this certificate number. And only after that is completed and uh, in the hands of Iowa Sud will you be responsible for paying the balance of the fund 5% of the transaction price similar to the other deals we've done. And uh, I'm, I'm glad to answer any questions on this transaction. Thank you all for the opportunity to help. Uh, this one, Jeff, it's about 1.3 million, right? The purchase? It's actually, uh, Chairman, uh, this is 1.5 million. Okay. 1.5 million is for 500 acre feet of municipal equipment. Questions, uh, Mr. Salinas? Yes, sir. Well, I don't have any questions. I mean, we, as I mentioned uh, on the previous uh, uh, item, we have a, a net total of uh, 2.5 million available just for the purchase of water rights. And I know Mr. Snowden uh, also visited with uh, La Feria Irrigation District, and I also know he visited with uh, Irrigation District Number 16 as well. So on those three, those three, I guess, entities that he visited and worked with uh, Roads uh, Enterprises as well. Any other questions, comments by the board? Sure. I move to approve uh, item 12. Second. I have a motion by lawyer. I have a second by, by Perez. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number four. Discussion possible action authorizing general manager to seek retail electrical contract and engage energy consultant. Mr. President, uh, just as a reminder and, and uh, new information for the new board member. The, the district has uh, in place right now a three-year energy supply contract with Gexa Energy. They pr provide our uh, wholesale electrical power. That contract expires in April of this coming year of 2022. Um, we had previously had a, an energy consultant by the name of Valiant uh, that we had used the board um, made the decision to terminate that agreement. I served that notice uh, after the last board meeting. So we, we no longer have an energy consultant. The way those energy consultants work is they go and supposedly they're supposed to shop, shop it around, bring the best deal to us, and then they get a small fee um, each month, you know, based on the, the power contract that they provide. So as of right now, we've got a clean slate. Our contract is set to expire in April. Um, we have terminated the agreement with the energy consultant. Uh, Mr. Uh, Salinas is seeking the authority to be able to go out and shop 
for energy providers with or without an energy consultant. The discussion that I've had with him is that um, this particular agenda item would be for him to go out and visit with the various providers if he was to determine that, hey, we do need a consultant and there would be value to the district in using a consultant and thus incurring that fee, then, then he would have the authority to move forward and, and retain uh, that consultant. But uh, as, as we sit here now, essentially he wants to go out and have an opportunity to shop the power, uh, see what the market is, and make a recommendation uh, to the board over the next uh, few months. Uh, well, it's high. What's it's going to be high. Oh, it is. <laughs> it is. It is. That's right. That's right. And so th that may, sure. you know, th that may um, be a, a, a reason to uh, employ an energy consultant. But essentially what we want to do <coughs> is see if we have to have that fee. And if we don't, then the district can save the money. Uh, if if it is of value, well, then we'll use the consultant and go from there. Okay. I move to authorize uh, General Manager to seek a retail electrical contract and engage in a energy co with an energy consultant. Second. I have a motion by lawyer. I have a second by Sandoval. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Item number five, discussion of possible action authorizing General Manager to seek professional audit services. Mr. Uh, President, of course, the district is required by statute to have an audit uh, every year. Um, this past year, we used one particular auditor. That contract is, is over, and so now is the time to go out and find a new auditing firm. This would simply authorize the general manager to go out and shop for uh, um, a, a new auditor, and of course, he would have to bring that, whatever recommendation he has to the board. So this isn't a, a blank check for him to go hire who he wants. It's you know, really just directing him to go out and find Who's us. Who's the one that we have right now? Who do we use? Oscar, Oscar Gonzalez. Oscar Gonzalez. Yeah. And, and I think he had done it for several years. Mm -hmm. um, he, did, he did it for two years. He did two years? Okay. Okay. Before okay. then, it was Gerald Okay. Okay. So this, this agenda item would just be directing uh, Mr. Salinas to go out and bring some sure. options to the board with the cost associated with it for the board to consider and decide which contract uh, they would like to, or which uh, auditor they'd like to go with. Okay. Sure. I make a motion to authorize the general manager to seek professional audit services. Second. Second. I have a motion by Solis. I have a second by Sandoval. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number six, discussion of possible action. Also running general manager to acquire water line, meter maintenance supplies, pipe, and feeding from non-contracted third-party vendors due to supply chain delays. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Uh, President, uh, members of the, of the board. Uh, it is usual, and uh, as other entities as well, that to go out uh, and solicit for bids for uh, any type of uh, material uh, for maintenance, regular maintenance, uh, fire hydrants, uh, piping, uh, anything of the need of the district to uh, do any uh, repairs or emergency repairs and or projects as well. Uh, as of today, uh, many vendors have uh, put the district and other uh, municipalities on in notice that uh, there have been a lot of delays on the supply and uh, cost associated associated with that they cannot honor uh, the pricing for one year. So basically what we're asking is just to uh, continue uh, the, the solicitation as far as getting three qu quotes on an as needed basis for the materials that we need uh, for the district. So basically we will go out uh, and get three quotes as on an as needed basis mm -hmm. uh, and not have that one year contract as we usually have for prior years. So quality control when you uh, pipes and everything that from a different company, they get it from the same supplier or? From the same, probably from the same uh, supplier, uh, from different uh, vendor, but yes, the, they cannot honor the pricing uh, for up to a year at this time. Mm -hmm. So so we'll get a fluctuation. There's a, a, a lot of fluctuation at this time in pricing. <coughs> So what we're asking the board is just to, to go on an as needed basis okay. for a month or two months sure. as, as we need it for yeah. any repairs. It's taking a while to get all the supplies, yes. the pipes and everything. Huh? Yes. On everything, on everything yeah. we used to. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Move to approve item six. Second. I have a motion by lawyer. Second. I have a second by Sandoval. All in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven, discussion possible action on a non-standard service agreement with 
Port Water and Wastewater Service to be submitted to Cage One Plaza LLC for the cost related to water and wastewater service for Elizondo Plaza subdivision. Excuse me. Uh, Mira, we have a. Nina Sabina, uh, with Hensley Engineering for the record. Uh, good evening, Gordon. So this subdivision is uh, at least um, is uh, consists of a commercial plaza with 13 feet. It's located on the northwest corner of East Goodwin Road. He's going to be able to connect to the sewer? Yes, sir. Or that's already in operation that, that the in front of his uh, place? Um, the, the, the sewer runs runs east-west right along the, uh -huh. uh -huh. the frontage there. Yeah. And that area in particular, we've, we've done a walkthrough there. Uh -huh. And so we're, we're hoping that by the time he's done with construction that, be ready. that that's already uh, yeah. ready. That's so a good project. Comments, questions? So move, item number seven. Second. Approved it the motion. Aye. Motion by Cesar, second by Perez. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number eight. Discussion possible action on non standard service agreement for water service to be submitted to El Carazales LLC for the cost related to water service for Carazales 2 subdivision. Uh, this subdivision here, uh, Carazales. Where is this one located? This is where it's uh, located uh, Western approximately Western. a half a mile north of uh, mile six along the east side of Western Road. Next to okay. the church. Milo. Yeah, yeah. Um, at the last meeting, Mr. Albert came in and told us about the shortage of water meters. What, do we have enough to accommodate them? Cover. Yeah, to cover the... We, uh, we purchased uh, 250 mechanical meters for now that we're going to be using on an as-needed basis until we get uh, supply for the smart, smart meters. meters. Yes. And then they can be switched out, right? Yes, we can swap them out and still use the And the still use those again. Meters we use in case we don't, you know, we don't get enough How many supply. smart meters do we have in stock? Uh, smart meters, uh, I don't have that answer, but I know we have 250 mechanical meters. I think we have about 100, 100 uh, smart meters. And those are, are, are being... Overseas. I don't know. The, the, the parts and all are, are, are overseas. I thought those were San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all of the boats. <laughs> okay, I make a motion to approve item number eight. I have a motion by lawyer. Second. Second by Solis. That's fine. <laughs> all in favor, signal up by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number nine. Discuss the possible action selecting employee health insurance plan and voluntary auxiliary products represented by IM Insurance Agency. Mr. Smiley Martinez. Thank you. Good evening. For the record, Good evening. Uh, my Thank name you. is Ismael Smiley Martinez. I am the owner agent of IM Insurance Agency, who represents our specialty fealty district at this time uh, on all insurance products and services. And here is a brief handout.
for every dollar that we give the insurance company, uh, if they pay out whatever it is, if it's a dollar, they pay out a dollar, then we'll go to Cuba. But if they pay out more than a dollar, then we're losing money, so they owe us. And subsequently, they're going to raise our rates. So traditionally, in the past, we've been at 50% or less. So they were making money so we could negotiate with them every year, and we would get a rate increase get better benefits and we get some other stuff. But unfortunately this year for every dollar that we paid them, they paid out a dollar forty two. Which is hundred forty two percent loss. So the renewal rate came in at forty two point two percent increase. Which was a huge increase. We went from four hundred and eighty seven dollars to seven I mean it was way out there. So I came and we met with the you know with I meet with the general manager and the benefits committee and they offered tell you about Humana and Aetna, the other two companies that we went and got quotes from. Aetna, all they wanted to offer us was a self-funded plan. Granted, it's very inexpensive. Unfortunately, with our claims they were, we would be devastated within the first 90 days. You would have to dig into your general fund and fund the additional money because it's just not in the plan. And unfortunately, we're not a group of 5,000 employees like the school districts are. Thank you. 
for a basic dental tax of uh, $14 and change for the employee. So when you add all of those together, uh, and, you know, we're, we were providing a, one of the best benefit packages that anybody has. <laughs> How many employees do we have? Seventy employees. Seventy-two. And we pay we pay everything, hundred percent dental. For the employee. Only yes. Only the employee. The employee. We don't pay for the expenses family. at all. Yes, the employee doesn't pay nothing. They not, not on the health insurance. No. Mm -hmm. Not on the health insurance. Dental either. The base dental. We offer two different plans. Mm -hmm. We offer a basic plan, and then the employee has the option to buy up and get right. different. Right. They pay for they pay for their dependents, for the children or family, their spouse, whichever it is. They pay a hundred percent for that. And the same thing. We don't have a stop loss or anything like that. Because we're not self-funded, sir. We're no. fully insured. And we cannot be self-funded. I don't recommend it. I'm not saying that no. we cannot be. I just don't recommend it. Let's just say, for example, <laughs> even if we were to do this, and let's just use this as an example, even if we were paying $550,000 for the year right. for just a health insurance policy, mm -hmm. one employee, one employee who has a major, major medical condition and runs the bill up over a million dollars on a self-funded policy, Right. We have to provide the money. Where do we get the money? But it, for, for example, we put like around 15000 5000 or something cap that we pay out of pocket, and then the rest goes in church. Uh, it doesn't give you a break, uh, reduction? We can, but premium? again, we are on the hook for the majority of that cost mm -hmm. as the entity, as mm -hmm. the employer. That's the difference between a self-funded and a right. fully insured. The risk falls completely on the carrier on the fully insured. On a self-funded or partially self-funded, the majority of the risk falls on the entity. Us. That, 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 that's what risk is. It's trans insurance is a transfer of risk. We're transferring it back to us when we do a self-funded or partially self-funded program. So I mean it's we, I mean as it is, we're trying to find money in the budget to cover the increase that we're going to incur and make a decision of do we continue to provide those extra ancillary benefits to the or do we cut back on that because uh, instead of the $130,000 increase, if we take the gap out, then we're going to save $53,110. What would that do to our uh, balance sheet? I mean, do we have a... And this is, I mean, this is our projections. I know that one of my, my recommendations was, of <coughs> course, to keep the, the same uh, health insurance plan, but removing the gap uh, and put it as a supplemental those are $53,000 and possibly the dental as well to put it as a supplemental but uh, those are $76,000 that as a matter of fact uh, I just met with uh, the, our new finance uh, director and uh, we're looking into 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 that as we speak by the way Mr. Mr. Jaime Reyna is our new you <laughs> finance, <laughs> finance <laughs> finance director. Welcome, Jaime. So, so, so yeah, we met on Saturday, so we're looking, we're looking, we're looking into that. Uh, we feel, we feel uh, comfortable being under under seventy six thousand above this year, uh, but not not the the full amount. And, and making it a, a supplemental to the to the. It's a great plan. It's like Smiley was saying. We it's a they got, it's a good plan for the employees. And, and if I may. If, if we do, like Mr. Salinas is, is recommending, we no longer have the, I will start paying for the, 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 the gap plan. So the rate will go up 5%, and that cost, the entire cost will be paid by the employee. It'll be payroll deducted. We take that amount times 12 divided by 24 to get their, to get their deduction, and the employee will pay 100% of that, which frees up that additional 53000 for our sud you know, that they don't have decision to make. Uh, we've got great employees here. It is just an unfortunate unfortunate year where those several employees had some very serious medical conditions. Sure. And uh, we do have options in the future, uh, like we've done in the past. If we get back under 50%, uh, you know, you know they're going to give us a, a better rate. Now, obviously, they're not going to come all the way back down to where we were. That's just not good business. Uh, however, every year we negotiate. 
so the item is for you to go and, and pick a, a insurance company or what is well, it? Well, my you're recommendation uh, as, uh, to the benefit committee and to Mr. Salinas is uh, to renew the current plan, even though we're getting a 30.8% increase. Uh, and of course, then make the different adjustments. <laughs> that would be up to you guys to make the different adjustments on the that. The finance guy, the new guy. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, when is the deadline to enroll uh, our well, place? We, we have What's the, 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 the purpose of what we're doing here, just for Mr. Mm -hmm. Perez's uh, 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 education here and Mr. Salinas here, uh, what we did before we were off cycle on the benefits, the insurances, and what we've done is we've made them all effective January 1, so that at this point, when you're in your budget workshop meetings, we have these numbers so that you can have final numbers to put into your budget and know, okay, we're not going to get into our fiscal year January 1, and then, oh, by the way, yeah. here comes the insurance renewal, and we not budgeted for it. We need to go back out into the budget and amend it. This way you have the real numbers <coughs> right now, not round numbers, real numbers that you can put into your budget for the next fiscal season. So we have time. It's not due until January 1. However, we do it now so that we can have our open enrollment for any employees to add I know what you mean. I mean, at our, at our, our bank, I mean, it, we used to get free uh, insurance and uh, rates went so up. So now we deduct the $50 from each employee every bi weekly. But if you guys, I mean, uh, the board is, whatever you put, the board is tight. I'm, I'm we're we're going to have a, our, our budget workshop pretty soon, right? In the next couple of weeks? Yes, yeah. that's one of the, the items uh, that we have to discuss the, the, the actual date. Okay. We're going to have the then uh, I'd like to make a motion to table this item so we meet in that budget workshop and we're all on the same page. And then we can yeah. even call a special call meeting if we need to, to approve this item. So we need to have a, it needs to be approved by December 1st, though, right? At the, at the very latest, because it's got to be effective uh, January 1. Now, if we're not going to make any change, it's okay to do it December 1st because it's just a simple change of numbers for payroll and finance. You know, uh, I'm just thinking about a meeting. I'm just yeah. thinking about it. Yeah. We need to have a special meeting. Yes, yeah. that's fine. Well, okay. yeah. that's, 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 that's my motion. Okay, Absolutely. I have a motion by lawyer. Second. I have a second by Sandoval. On the favor, second by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Good presentation. Thank you. Item number 10, discussion of possible action regarding the local agreement with City of Solomon relating to fire hydrants within city limits. Uh, Matt, Mr. Sunny. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, you have to check? Okay. Uh, on this, uh, on this uh, Mr. President, members of the board, on this... Uh, on this next item, it's an interlocal agreement, of course, with the city of Sullivan related to fire hydrants. So, uh, it is my understanding, uh, as I read the, through, the, through the agreement, that the fire department will be working on some of the fire hydrants, about 50 plus or minus fire hydrants, uh, for testing purposes uh, there in the, in, in the city, which, of course, the infrastructure belongs to Awasad. So, the only, uh, I guess, beverage uh, that was added there is that Awa must be present at all times when they're doing the, uh, testing. the testing. testing. Oh, the, lang the language. Sorry, so that's uh, what the in interlocal agreement uh, entails. It's the same interlocal agreement we've entered into with the uh, Palm, correct? Okay. Make a motion to approve item number 10. Second. I have a motion by lawyer, second by Sandoval. On a favor, second by Pasay and I. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 11, discuss the possible action authorizing general manager 
to file water rights petition with Hidalgo County Irrigation District number six and 16 to convert water use after subdivision in accordance with section 49.053 of Texas Water Code. Yes, sir, uh, Mr. President, I know that uh, Matt stepped out, uh, but basically uh, the water rights uh, petition is uh, it's in, in hand uh, with the Texas uh, Water Code where uh, the district is allowed to petition uh, from the water district the other the water rights that were, uh, I guess the, the, the subdivisions or the properties that were subdivided, the district has the authority to file a petition to recover those water rights based on uh, subchapter O and the pricing will be, if I'm not mistaken, at 68% uh, reduction, of, reduction of the original price, which is $3,000. So it's 68% of $3,000 per acre foot for each subdivision or each property that was subdivided within, I believe it was one or two years prior. Yeah, two division. years. Excuse me for stepping out. I started to cough and I didn't want to cough all over everybody. <laughs> but uh, Mr. Salinas has that right. Um, so, you know, just as, as, as you can envision, as subdivisions go into you know what were rural areas provided you know that were uh, supplied irrigation uh, water, um, we have the right under statute to go in and petition to acquire the water rights from those irrigation districts at a 68% statutory rate. So obviously it's cheaper than anything else we could get on the market, right? Um, what 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 I don't know is you know, so we can go back two years. So the rule is you go two years and then to the next January. First. So we've got a deadline every year of January 1st to file a petition for the previous uh, two years, which will be like two and a half years, okay? And so I, I don't know if that's been done. It may have been done. Um, I, I'm, I'm unsure, but we do know that there have been some new subdivisions in the last year since um, my firm's been involved. So we want to petition for those rights. And then what we would like to do with the board's uh, permission or recommendation is go back and look over – you know, pick the date that you know we can go back to, and then just go review those uh, agreements to see if there are possibly some other water rights that are you we send might them a demand for. or what? what is it, it it's called a petition. Uh, there's a statutory form. We actually send it to the irrigation district, and then I think they have a year. It, it might be two years uh, to approve it, and then then we can pay the funds to them. But it's just it's a uh, it's it's a statutory process. You know, for when we take over that that uh, land, you know, the state allows us to get the water. I make a motion Second. to authorize the general manager to file water right petition with the Hidalgo County Irrigation District number six and 16 to convert water use after subdivision in accordance with section 49.503 of the Texas Water Code. Okay. I have a motion by Solis. I have a second by Cesar. All in favor, second by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Item 13, discussion possible action approving clerical correction on meeting minutes, correcting that year from 20 to 2020 to 2021 on the adoption of date of meeting minutes for the meetings held on the following dates, 114 21 24 21 24 21 24 21 5 6 21 5 24 21 and 9 2nd 21 so there's a clerical error on, on the minutes that were approved okay. the form didn't get changed from 20 to 21 um, one of the smart people here caught it, and so this is a motion just to allow that to be corrected. Motion. I have a motion by Loya. Second. I have a second by Sandoval. All in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 14, general manager report, item A. I will set a workshop slash uh, board meeting. Mr. Salinas. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Mr. President, members members of the board, at the end of your package, there's a, there's a calendar, actually, uh, for November uh, 2021. And uh, this item we're uh, recommending to have a workshop. It's going to be either November 13th or November 15th. That's our recommendation. And basically the tentative schedule will be uh, four hours in the morning for budget uh, purposes, overview and summary. And of course, we can go over some other details as far as organizational uh, chart, evaluation process for supervisory and non-supervisory position and uh, employee interview hiring forms uh, that I want to present to the, uh, to the board as well. So I know uh, that we're also discussing a uh, director training as well. 
And it's for approximately a four hour uh, match, if I'm not mistaken? Uh, the, the in person, well, oh, the, in -person. The, the in person training, which we can do virtually, um, is, is about a four hour uh, program. There are some other training requirements. For instance, there's a, a one hour class uh, on online through the Attorney General's Office on the Open Meetings Act. Um, there is a uh, one hour class on the uh, Open Records uh, Act that, that you have to uh, take. So there's a total of about 10 hours that, that you're going to uh, be subjected to, Mr. Perez. Now, everybody that's else has been through there, too, and I, I suspect that you've been, been through those. You've been through that, you know, which uh, raises some questions. Is there maybe – I'm going to look at the – I've never had this issue before. We had another uh, board member come back. So to the extent that you're required to do the training <coughs> again, uh, we'll get that done. But I will look to see if there's something that you don't have to do. Uh, well, whatever yeah. – whatever Sounds good. So, what are the dates that the, the, you're going to propose to us? The 13th? We a consensus uh, from the board to have it, uh, well, my recommendation is to have it on November 13th. A Saturday. To, on a Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what time is morning? Uh, from 9 to 12. Okay. Um. And of course, Matt will check on the director's training, and that, of course, pertains more to the new, new lead director, but everybody is you know, welcome to, to stay or, or have that also director uh, refresher. Uh, director of training. So well. it would no, be, I can't it would do be the training on the 13th. Oh, on the th well, yeah. That's okay, so it would okay. be a, a one-day workshop, right? A yes. few hours, four hours. Yes. And that's for the budget. Okay. Only. And the 15th was, was another day, right, that you were proposing, which is on the, Monday. The 20th was uh, mainly for the... Uh, the 20th no, you said 15th. You said 13th I'm sorry. Or 15th. I think the 20th. Uh, I said mean, the 20th. 20th. The 20th. Yeah. The 20th. I'm sorry. Saturday or Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, I, I won't be here on the 20th, but I, I can That's do it the 20th. Yeah, yeah, we're on vacation, bro. Of course, yeah, vacation too. <laughs> <laughs> There's no option. 13th. 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 Yeah, the 13th. I'm good with the 13th. That's right. And then you morning. Go, I mean, we'll it's in the morning. Yeah, yes. 9 to 12. That's what yeah. he said. 9 to 12. Okay, 13th. 10, 10, 10 to 1, we'll learn it. 10 to 1, no? Because we're not at the front row. It's all over. We're gonna need a motion for that, right? Yeah. That was just correct. You don't need a motion. Okay, no motion. Just There'll just be a uh, notice. Uh, just a consensus that on the 13th, yeah. we'll, we'll prefer to, to have uh, the uh, budget. <laughs> okay, and you'll get back to Mr. Perez. Mr. Perez. That's that's what I was saying <coughs> on the, the, the training part of it. I'd like to get Mr. Perez uh, and, and work out. Can I make chances? Sounds like I'd like to be with you on the 13th. I can't be pretty busy. Right, right. No, right. That's good. All right. Unless you want good. two teenagers. The 13th. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next item 14B Engineering Selection Committee report. Mr. Yes, uh, Mr. President, uh, we received uh, six uh, responses, and th those are for the engineering uh, RFQs. We had uh, Melvin and Hunt, uh, Sane, uh, M2 Engineering, ETH. Javier Hinojosa Engineering and South Texas Infrastructure Group. Uh, we formed a committee uh, per uh, the president's uh, direction, and we found uh, all engineering firms to be capable of conducting engineering professional services for the district, of course, based on the RFQ determination. Uh, and again, we, uh, we recommend the use of engineering uh, firms uh, on an as needed basis uh, for that. So that's the report uh, that we have. And of course, the overall determination were from good to outstanding. Uh, on, on that form, uh, that we grade them, uh, the committee. Okay. So that's uh, what I have as far as a uh, uh, status uh, report on the engineering selection. Okay. And we can use these engineers for any other project that comes out, right? Any any that comes out. project that comes out, yes. Yes. Okay. Depending on the size of the contract, they'd have to come back to the board for approval. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I mean, every time uh, there's a hiring for an engineering firm, I will need to come back to the to the board for approval uh, of, of course, uh, the project and the actual, uh, I guess, engineering services that are going to be provided. This is just, uh, so what happened was at, at one of the past board meetings, I want to say like in August, uh, the, the board authorized to submit an RFQ to essentially build a list of engineers that would be interested in doing work for the district. Yeah, it's like so a pool of engineers. Yeah, yeah, you got it. You got where it. you can select. Yeah, and so that, that's come in. The list is ready. Of course, you know, 
we're not. At the, this is not an action item because there's not a particular project at this minute that yeah. the general manager is looking to hire. But we'll be one step ahead of the process next time because we won't have to ask the board's authority to solicit RFQs. We've already got that done, and so um, okay. If so the, the project comes up. So the way we do it at, at the school district, we have a pool of engineers. Then we have a committee that that, that would rank the engineers for that specific project. Yep. Would that go on here? And that's largely what's been done. Uh, Mr. Uh, Salinas has got a, a kind of a range. Yeah, I, I understand that, but let's say for a specific project, we believe one engineer has uh, he has a better background or expertise for on that. Job, right? For that job, yep. Would there be like a ranking committee? Like, could the board and, and some uh, members of the uh, or employees form a committee to to rank? Is that yeah. what we had in place? Th that's what they did, and it was uh, Mr. Salinas, Pam, and Albert on the mm -hmm. committee. No, I understand that, 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 that they're all capable. No, what Lloyd is saying say is that if there's an actual project that's going to take place, mm -hmm. is there going to be a committee that's going to be able to rank A committee to actually them? rank, you know what? To see uh, if which of the of the engineers is best suitable for that particular Yeah, so job. for example, sure. in the school, so when, when I have a project, I have a pool of engineers, we select three to four from there, and then we rank them based on similar projects that they've done in the past. I mean, I just, is that going to okay. be done? Per project basis. Sure. Yeah, and for instance, how I, how this could be done based on our current situation and in compliance with the Professional Services Procurement Act is, let's say that uh, a, a new road, we got to build a, a, a pipe across the street, whatever the project is. Uh, Mr. Salinas could then go to his list and he say, okay, we've got these six engineering firms. Yes. These three are capable of doing it, and I think that you know it's you know this one first, this one second, and this one third. Okay. And then what he could, would do is come to the board and say, and and would put an agenda item there, uh, item on there, and say, hey, look, here's what we've done. I have ranked them in this, you know, order. I suggest that we hire, you know, ABC, okay. and and go from there. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bring him back. Yeah, I get yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. But it's it's really <coughs> similar to what you're talking about, uh, Director Wood. Eddie, you had something to say? Any other questions, comments? Yeah. Item uh, 15, District Engineer's Report. Item A, NetBank Technical Assistance Agreements or Hookups. Mr. Mito Salinas. Thank you. Subdivisions. We have a list of subdivisions that we're reviewing, and then some that are that we've already completed the review. And then uh, after that, we have uh, permits. Any permits that we have to get to the county for any crossing of road or to protect us. Um, and that's what we've done for the month of October. Uh, the first item uh, on the project was the Nat Bank uh, Technical Assistance Agreement Construction Management. Uh, right now, the status of that project. Um, out of those <coughs> 1,187, 276 
six are on the base two side, which is which is the on the north side where they're not able to connect yet, but that's how they did install it. It's basically from the point of connection at the home to the point of connection at the property line. Uh, out of those, 825 septic tanks have been uh, pumped and hauled, and 794 of those 825 have been fully retained. Um, since since in, in the previous meeting, since the project is uh, came in under budget, there's some additional sewer uh, mains that will be able to be extended and connect uh, additional homes. Uh, right now, we, we submitted our, our work authorization for that, and uh, and it's under review by by NADVAC, But we have at least uh, in our previous meeting a good verbal from them that uh, it's looking good. Um, and we actually had some good news to where uh, the six million dollar grant would go towards the construction management and towards construction and potentially the additional what they call technical assistance is for the surveying design and basically to get to construction and they have a different uh, funding that they call a DCAP and so um, in our last meeting with Mr. Acevedo we mentioned that uh, that those monies might be able to be used for that and not not take from the six million dollars which is good news uh, and this is something that we just found out about last week and that's uh, we're nice. gonna good. let everybody know about that so you said 700 877 connections already in la, uh, connected 877 are, are live already. so those people are paying already uh, revenue uh, funds to the well ones. that is correct yeah. uh, every uh possibly like every every week to every other week we provide uh the the meter the meter number so that she can uh, start billing the following month. This land, we pay in Mission, right? For yes. what are we pay? There's a, there's a main lift station by uh, Bates uh, Road, by the power plant, mm -hmm. and that main lift station pumps into the City of Mission uh, sewer plant on Conway, mm -hmm. on US 83, and there's a, there's a rate per gallon. I don't have that. Uh, Not sure. How much know. are we making on each uh, gallon? On, the, on each gallon? I don't, yeah. have the, I don't have that answer yeah. for you. But I'll, but I'll get that answer for you. But, but that's good. Eight, 700, 800. They're, they're mainly where? On the south mainly, side? Mainly on the, mm -hmm. uh, on the south, south west side. Mm -hmm. Which was the first phase of, of, of the sewer project. Wow, that's, that's great. That's, that's the real good. I don't remember. Oh, well, we should have been done a long time ago. So <laughs> <I'm almost laughs> we should have been <laughs> at, uh, <laughs> like one point we we been at uh, 1,900 <laughs> connections already. But I don't recall the, the, the <laughs> rate for the way, you know? Uh, what do you say? 39, what's the basic? Maybe by next time we can. Yes, sir. We were getting we'll around 10,000. It started out slow because it started Ooh. in January of, yeah. that, of this year, and then we've been adding to it ever since. Every yeah. month we have. We'll put it as part of the budget uh, meeting. That'll be yeah. great. So yes. We can have uh, all those uh, answers uh, clear as yes, far sir. as the, the <laughs> revenue that we're getting from those 800. Uh, and all the maintenance, we got to do it, right? Yes. 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 That is correct. Yeah, so we got to put somebody. I just stopped you in the middle of the traffic. Um, on the next, the next page we have uh, mile three road water line improvements. This project bas basically happened because of the, the widening that's going on on, on mile three. Right now, they've installed approximately service connection and then actually connecting to to the existing uh, water infrastructure to uh, to put those in, in, into service. Uh, Did the state pay for that water line removal? Actually, no. 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 Uh, uh, it's it's uh, uh, Mile 3. Where, where is that? That, 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 that was done. That was done. No, it was yeah. done from the $5 million that was already used. Yes. It's one of the five oh. Because they're unfunded. Be the same thing for the 495 wagon, right? The, that one has no budget right now. It hasn't been accounted for it originally. And so um, right now in our, we, we had a test meeting this, this, this past week, and 
Marlins that eventually need to get removed. And so uh, we met with with the road uh, with the roadway contractor, the water line contractor, um, and then and the construction manager for the county. Mm-hmm. And we we had some discussions going on to see if if uh, the contractor that I was had hired removes that water line because by the time they remove that temporary bypass. Project is uh, Liberty Road waterline improvements. This is a very similar project to the Mouse Uh Right now, that project, uh, we've completed the plans and specifications, so the project is shovel ready. And right now, we're basically uh, just pending directive to, to go out for, for bids on this. Uh, it just depends on, on how soon the county and the city are planning to start construction on it's that gonna project. going to be from three to the and oh, yes, and that's basically uh, Liberty Road uh, from Expressway to Mousley. Can you wait in at home? Uh, basically, we, we want to get some scheduling from, from the county and the city as to when they plan to start construction so that so that we can uh, but include this as part of the next year's budget. So we're waiting on them. Yes. Yeah, the plans okay. are ready. Yeah, we need to do that. The next project is SM-492 Water Treatment Plant Water Recovery and Waste Process Improvements. We call it the Water Savers. Um, this project is is basically it's awarded. The notice to proceed is actually was predated a while back because uh, materials we were told were going to take about 18 weeks to receive. Uh, so that notice to proceed was dated for November 1st. Uh, submittals have been reviewed and the estimated the first. The estimated time of arrival that was provided to us for materials was October 18th. A couple of weeks ago, we received an update that it's now November 18th. So uh, right now, at this time, uh, they're expecting to receive materials then. And so we, they've been notified that you know, that's basically the date. The day of commencement is today. And so they need to start construction on that. Uh, the other project uh, we have listed on here is Mile 2 Mission Interconnect. Um, this is a, also a, a shovel ready project <laughs> that uh, a while back um, when Mile 2 was widened, there was a gap that, that was cut off from the Mission Interconnect. We've, we've completed the plans, they're shovel ready for, for this project, and what's pending here is an interlocal, uh, revising the interlocal agreement with the City of Mission to have this emergency vehicle. Uh, the Stoller project is uh, Havana Water Treatment Plant Improvements. This Reservoir. Uh, this is a Texas Water Development Board funded project. Right now, uh, the status update that we have for this is basically we've, we've completed uh, the majority of the, of the survey work uh, and we're, we're presently working in, on the environmental portion of this. We're approximately 50% with the environmental. Uh, as when, we were, when we sent out letters, we received letters from uh, the Texas Historical Commission U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and FEMA uh, that requested responses. Uh, Texas Historical Commission re- requested an archae- archaeological. It was completed by a subconsultant that we hired. Um, it came back with no findings, so that was good news. And so right now, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers requested a preliminary design to uh, uh, so that so that they could see that we account for any changes, patterns of, of drainage because the property is located with with an area of uh, uh, the 100-year flood zone, but it is for a reservoir, so we have to account for any displacement uh, and changing uh, drainage patterns. So um, that's something that we're working on right now. And and once we complete the environmental phase and it's cleared with the Water Development Board, then we would get into the design phase of the project. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, comments (coughs) for the board? I got a question for you. Uh, I know Mission is going to charge us depending on how much water they receive on the sewer, right? And what happened, maybe I'm not an engineer, but for example, I mean, there's another, I mean, there's not an agenda, 495. The sewer uh, is packed with water. Like, they take out the water, it comes, (coughs) it fills up again. Uh, I mean, can we be overcharging for water is going to be like, Water levels 
the water is getting filtration or like, like ground water, like yeah. ground water getting yeah. into the system. Yeah, when we have I mean, I'm not talking a gallon. I'm talking of about course, man. But there is some filtration. In the, well, that's well, when I was uh, working with the city of Mission, that was that was one of the main problems that we had, uh, especially from the north side, the, from the north side northwest of We're Mission. About the that uh, when it rains, if uh, let's say for example in a home on a property, you you get uh, water water standing on your property, so many of the residents would open the manhole lids or the or the clean outs so all the storm water will go into the system so that's why you will see uh, overflows in several uh, streets especially on inspiration as you know mm -hmm. so <laughs> so we had all those, those issues in mission point it rains so you but you're talking about infil infiltration for example the one 495 it's not here on the agenda 495 for discussion but the sewer but we need to look at it whenever we put it here because um, the manholes are Yeah, and it's on a per gallon, so it's a, it's meter oh, it per gallon. Us, it hits our pocket. So every time it rains, Mission will get a good <laughs> check. Yeah. Well, when it doesn't rain, yes. like when it hasn't yeah. rain. Yes, yes, so but you're talking about infiltration, yeah. and that too. Yeah, yeah. That so too, I mean, it, it'll gotta, measure by the gallon. We gotta make sure. And that's that's, that's one of the reasons why we haven't provided a substantial completion for for that portion of the project, is because we want to make sure that that, that gets uh, fixed before, yeah. before we put you it be the one in charge to make sure that gets fixed, right? Or, I mean, yeah, I know you're an yeah, employee, but that's... Unfortunately, <laughs> and unfortunately. <laughs> well, he's in charge of it. Well, okay, see if we can put it on agenda and discuss it further. Yes, sir. Thank you, that, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Uh, comments, questions? Yeah. Uh, Item 16, executive session, as provided by Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code <laughs> Section 551.071. 551.091, a board of directors may convene and close the executive session, deliberate, discuss, or consult regarding the matters listed below, uh, proper motion or approval on any items set forth above. Item A, Marwell LLC requests for a change order pertaining to NetBank Palmview Yard Line Project, hookup project. Item B, Marwell liquidated damages for Palmview Wastewater Collection System, main lift station, and force main. Net motion to go into executive session at 7.13. So moved. I have a motion by Sundalat. Second. Second by Solis. All in favor, signal by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries.